Good evening everyone. We are the group one and tonight we will present to you the Hilda Taba model. So before we start with the main topics, let me share to you the outlines of our presentation. So we have first the introduction and then second is the curriculum definition. Third is Taba steps of curriculum development and then last is the strengths and limitations. I will start with introducing the author. So everyone, this is Hilda Taba. Hilda was born on December 7, 1902 in a small village in southeastern Estonia. She is an architect, a curriculum theorist, curriculum reformer, eminent author, and teacher educator. She is a student of John Dewey and colleague of John Tyler. Just a little trivia, John Dewey is an American philosopher and also an educator, while John Tyler was the 10th President of the United of States. She supported the inductive approach to curriculum development. Inductive approach is also known as inductive reasoning. So when you say inductive approach, it starts with detailed observations of the world which moves towards more abstract generalizations and ideas up until you develop a theory. Taba believed that curriculum should be designed and developed by curriculum users, especially teachers. She created a multi-purpose teaching model that utilizes the use of multiple process including the listing, grouping, regrouping, labeling, and synthesizing. Her model grassroots approach is a modified version of Tyler's model. So now let us differentiate the Taba model versus the Tyler model. Taba model and Tyler model are two curriculum development models. The Tyler model was developed by Ralph Tyler and the Taba model was developed by Hilda Taba. The key difference between the two is that Tyler model consists of four basic concepts whereas the Taba model consists of seven steps. Moreover, the Tyler model basically focuses on offering freedom for students to select what they learn, whereas the Taba model offers the opportunity for teachers to develop the curriculum. Taba's definition of curriculum For Taba, she defines curriculum as a document containing a statement of the aims and of the specific objectives. It also indicates some selection and organization of content. It either implies or manifests certain patterns of learning and teaching because the objective demand or the content organization that requires it includes a program of evaluation of the outcomes. Like what I said earlier that Taba is using the inductive approach which starts with detailed observations of the world and then which moves towards generalizations up until you can came up with a theory. Hilda Taba model Taba believed that there is a definite logical and sequential order in creating a curriculum. She promotes the down-to-top model or grassroots approach. Taba's grassroots model have seven steps as listed below, advocating a major role for teachers. The approach is a step-by-step -step plan which focuses on a process for determining what needs to be taught to students and includes a guide on how to accomplish the outcomes from students. Let's move on to the seven steps of Hilda Taba model of curriculum development. The first step is a diagnosis of needs, Next is the formulation of objectives. Third is the selection of content. Fourth is the organization of content. The fifth step is the selection of learning experiences. The sixth is the organization of learning experiences. And the last step is evaluation. We will now discuss one by one the seven steps of Hilda Taba model of curriculum development. The first step is the diagnosis of learners' needs. 
In this step, the teacher, who is also the curriculum designer, starts the process by identifying the needs of the students for whom curriculum is to be planned. The diagnosis involved in curriculum development, according to Taba, would center on the thought that there is a need to accommodate different types of learners, to introduce new content, and to emphasize different aspects through learning. Taba explains that we cannot determine students' needs nor what content we should teach without diagnostic checks. These checks determine a diagnosis of achievement. And without these checks, we would be overreaching on the curriculum or underestimating and reteaching what students already know. Taba likens this to closing the gap of what students know and what we need to teach them. This is quite similar to what is asked of teachers and instructional specialists when doing curriculum and determining what to teach. Taba wrote that educators should diagnose where students are as learners in addition to achievement. For Taba, this included understanding students' backgrounds, cultures, motivational patterns, how they learn socially, and what cultural capital they bring from home to the classroom. Taba actually writes, when considering learning to read, the choice of content and the approach to learning depend on whether the students are largely slum dwellers or from the middle class. Taba also felt that it is essential for us to consider interpersonal relationships, the classroom climate, and group values when we diagnose curriculum needs. Today, as well, these three aspects of teaching continue to be important and studied. Finally, Taba expects that a diagnosis of curriculum problems must occur as the final part of this first step of curriculum development. She explains that in order for educators to determine what should be taught, we must formulate hypotheses, assemble data, and interpret them. She feels too that teachers should be involved in all parts of this process. The second step of Hilda Taba model of curriculum development is the formulation of learning objectives. After the teacher has identified the needs of learners that require attention, he or she specifies the objectives by which needs to be fulfilled. Development of overall goals originates from a variety of authentic sources such as according to demands of society and needs of students. Taba found that the function of objectives was twofold. One, on one hand, school-wide outcomes, and on the other hand, more specific objectives that describe behaviors to be obtained in a certain unit, subject area, course, or program. The primary function of the latter type of objective would be what would guide decisions on what to cover or to emphasize in a curriculum. Objectives, according to Taba, also serve to provide a common, consistent focus for the activities included in a curriculum, as well as a guide for the evaluation of achievement. Taba stated that objectives should describe the kind of behavior expected and the content to which the behavior applies if one is attempting to create clear objectives. She elaborated by stating objectives are developmental representing the roads to travel rather than terminal points. Teachers, in her opinion, would use the objectives as a blueprint of sorts, then as a guide to what they are building with their students. Now let's proceed to the third step of the Hilda Taba model of curriculum development, which is the selection of learning content. So on this step, the objective selected or created suggest the subject matter or content of the curriculum. Not only objectives and content should match, but also the validity and significance of the chosen content need to be determined. So the main goal for this step is the relevance and significance of the learning content towards our learning objective, which is we have identified on the second step. So after completing the second and third steps, now we can proceed to the fourth step, which is the organization of learning content. 
So this um, phase, a teacher cannot just select content but must organize it in a particular sequence, taking into consideration the maturity of the learners, their academic achievement, and their interests. So the flow of organizing the learning content will be from simple to complex. On this phase also, we have to decide how are we going to teach the learning content, what process we will be using in teaching it, or what methods and techniques that we will apply to teach the learning content effectively. So here are some methods and techniques that we could use to impart our learnings towards our students. First, the inductive method approach. The inductive approach, it focuses in detecting and noticing patterns. So with this approach, the teachers will provide examples and ask the learners to find the rules. So examples are brainstorming, bus sessions, and experiments. We also have the deductive approach. This is very teacher-centered, straight to the point, and time-saving. So with this, the example we could um, provide will be, as teachers, we will discuss certain subject we will um explain the correct usage and it rule and its rules then we can let our students apply it in different ways in practicing the concept we could use the indirect and direct teaching method so with indirect it um means student centered approach so students so we will um let our students develop their critical thinking. So one of those exercises are virtual study groups, completion of projects, presentations, and papers, and completing completion of reading. Or we could have also the direct approach, which is teacher directed. So that will be us. So how are we going to teach the learning content using this approach? So we have lots of options to do this by using demonstration videos, descriptions or modeling of assignments and learning activities, announcements, and presentation. Or we could also follow the four A's of adult learning, which are activity, analysis, abstraction, and application. And lastly, using the three I's method, the introduction, interaction, and integration. So as future educators, we have to know how to teach our learning content effectively. The fifth step is selection of learning experiences. Content must be presented to students and they must be engaged with the content. At this point, the teacher should select appropriate instructional methodology that will involve the students with the content. Now, as teachers, we have to be very creative in terms of giving out instructional materials to our students for the reason that we want to grab their attention. And once we have their attention, interaction and participation will come to life. Sixth, organization of learning activities. The learning activities are organized in a sequence depending both on content sequence and learner's characteristics. The teacher needs to keep in mind the students he or she will be teaching. Now we have to be reminded that our learners or students are varied, meaning they have different learning capabilities. That's why we need to tailor fit our learning activities so that they will be appropriate to all students that we are teaching. Last step is evaluation. Students' progress is monitored throughout the year. The curriculum planner, that is, the teacher must determine what objectives have been accomplished. 
To assess the achievement of learning objectives, evaluation procedures need to be designed. We all know that evaluation is a very important factor in teaching because it assesses how much our students have learned in our class and at the same time, it will give them the idea about the progress they're making. Thus, we have to carefully design our evaluation so that it will really target what it purports to measure, and that is to gauge our students' learning. Hi teachers, I will be discussing the strengths and limitation of using the TABA model. Let's talk about the strengths first. This model taps into higher order thinking skills, builds comprehension skills such as inference, synthesizing, and summarizing. The third one, it gifted learners will thrive with opportunities to explore questions with multiple correct answers. Questioning is open-ended. It requires question that a participant to answer their own words, no clear right or wrong response. So when grouped together, students work collaboratively with others to build speaking and listening skills. It also provides an opportunity for healthy classroom discussions before and, gen and after generalizations are made. Teacher awareness on the needs of the students. Learner-centered. In this curriculum, students have opportunities and increases responsibility to identify their own learning needs, to find and choose and incorporate resources and to construct their own knowledge based on their needs and interests. According to TABA, there is a need to find um, requirements of the needs of the learners before designing the curriculum. We also have teacher-centered. Teachers are the most important factor in curriculum building. A teacher should participate in curriculum from beginning to end. It also uses inductive method. Taba believed that curriculum should be developed its real practitioner rather than imposed by superior levels instead of, instead of creating a macro level curriculum. It also follows a linear model. Teaching and development is a step-by-step -step process and learners have to co complete the task in order to progress. And the last one, we have curriculum as a plan for learning. Limitations of using the TABA model can be difficult for some students to handle the open-ended aspect of model Without clear direction, it may be difficult for the teachers to plan and prepare questions for path the students to take. Difficult to adapt for all subjects or at least for some types of text. Students has a lot of work to do and it would be really difficult for them. Teachers not understanding the connection between the content activities teaching methods and evaluation keeping the resources up to date the reconstructions of curricula and programs is not a short-term effort but a long process lasting for years thus this model seemed to be time consuming and it's hard to keep the resources up to date it also difficult for heterogeneous and teachers may also find it difficult to strike an acceptable balance among the needs and interests of the students. Other curriculum developers prefer to consider the more global aspects of the curriculum before proceeding to specific. The last one is maintaining training for new teachers on the methods as well as the support needed for the teachers as they must review the plan often. Conclusions about the model. The main idea of this model is that the students are the forefront of the curriculum. So this encourages higher order thinking skills in the classroom which allows students to start with concepts and dig deeper into that particular concept.
So the last part of this presentation, Tabas models relativity in the Philippines. It considers the learner's needs, study environment, facility, and time. A curriculum must be planned by teachers and students are the center of the curriculum. Teachers as curriculum developers emphasizes the need to organize the content and the learning process. The last one, evaluation of social sensitivity.